first at the emission of this time. There's no shift, the, the, the atmosphere is passive, there's no emission of the atmosphere, it's just pure filter. Okay. No, the problem is that there's a contradiction. You tell me, you absorb a 66, but everybody else is shifting. What a moment, why 66 is not going to be shifted to 670 and then you cannot <coughs> absorb it? Yes. I, I like your solution, but if I take your classical equation, mm -hmm. then the shift is either from the source or the receiver. If I have an absolute space, and then if I blame my motion all on my receiver, I think then that picture would work, but only under that condition. Is that the word you know what I'm saying? You are treated in your classical equation. Yes. Let's assume that in absolute space that star is fixed, but that I am moving on the Earth at some high rate. Uh -oh. yeah. Then I think that that other the web solution would have locked, but only if that's that right because then everything is shifted, including yeah. yeah. Right. But the interpretation is that the star is moving away from us. Yeah, the special relativity won't work both yeah. ways. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, it seems that relativity cannot explain the existence because he has to make an exception for 66. Everything shifts, but not 66, so they can swallow it. Okay. There's a little, another. Okay, so there's no double shift for this guy, but there's double shift for everybody else. Before you hit the atmosphere, that's the, that's the problem. Okay. Okay, keep going. So summarizing the difficulties. What happens with relativity and web one is that they shift from one frame to the other at their own convenience. Thus, using the atmospheric frame uh, of the star, they say there's no water. So the H atom there can absorb 66 photons in agreement with quantum mechanics. You see? Then switching to the Earth frame, they say there is a positive Doppler effect. So all wavelengths shift to the red, making the 66 hole appear at, at 670 because 655 and 657 go to 669 and 671. Keep going. But this duality contradicts the fact that the 656 photons are also double shifted immediately between the star and the atmosphere, just before absorption occurs. Okay? Now, there's another possibility. How about some 643 photons emitted by the star which are shifted to 656 and then they could be absorbed by the H atoms mm. by the same reason? But, okay, but that would produce a dark line at 656, not at 670. Which is what is absurd. And in fact, the 642 will be again uh, emitted. Uh, no, it could be absorbed. Uh, I said 653 would appear. Oh, yeah, the 653 can be stretched to 656 okay, and absorbed. But actually, the star shrinks them back to 643, so it cannot be absorbed. Anyway, it's another solution. Keep going. See how, how is time going? Yeah. Okay, this is a summary. Look, this is now a, a, in a table form all the wavelengths that are pertinent, including 400 to 700, the limits of the visible range. I put that 642 being uh, stretched to 656, and I put the three neighbors, the 656 and the two neighbors, shifted to the corresponding wavelength here. And the, this is a, a uh, blue shift because this is 670 from the the nebula was moving away from us, it shrunk it back to 66. Okay, so this is the only good shift. Okay, I want to explain, uh, I put here all the shift calculated with three significant figures. Here's the classical formula, and here's the relativity. It's a slight difference in this fourth place, uh, fourth significant. But I, I round it up for discussion uh, so they're both the same set of lines. Okay, according to that, then. What happens in the classical interpretation become is this. C56 is stretched to 670, but it cannot be absorbed by the photons. But the photons perceive them as, as C56, but that's a blue shift. So then it can be absorbed. So it absorbs it, but the hole appears at 670. Okay? That's a classical explanation. The shrinking, the stretching and shrinking. It, it eats the chicken in the proper size, but then the light itself that goes to Earth is missing, remember, missing 670. Okay. The relativistic uh, diagram, the going, is this one. It says, uh, okay, this can be shifted from here by stretching. If you absorb it, 
then you produce a hole at 656 .2, which is not absurd. How about uh, 656 being stretched? They cannot be absurd here. If all the process where you shrink 670 to 656 and eat it, the relativity theory doesn't accept because there's no doctor. Uh, relativity, there's no doctor. Okay? So this is the only thing that can happen. If there's an absorption, it's absorption from this lower guy stretched to 656 and you shall have, but this doesn't happen. We don't see this 656, we see 670. Okay. Finally, okay. This is a little animation, but of course in two steps of the whole thing. I just put half of the atmosphere, and this is the normal case of secrecy absorbed. We have a, a dark line here. Uh, okay, that's the theory. Now you play the next one, it's moving, and there is there it is. You stretch here, and this atmosphere believes it is 656. But the missing light is 670, and this is the classical theory. I'm just reiterating it in two steps. Let's keep going. Uh, David. Hello. Okay, so okay, so this is the negative part of the of the paper. I'm, I'm blaming relativity theory that cannot solve. I'm blessing uh, classical theory. Now, a positive consequence, because I remember I tried to do this experiment and I couldn't, but I know that the theory is fabulous. So, what is this experiment? People who didn't hear me last year, look at the experiment. It's, it's very nice. According to the explanation given, we see that the classical Doppler effect really exists between an emitter and a Doppler, even if there is no relative motion. Okay? So even if the formula tells there's if this is equal to this, there can be no Doppler, we know that there's an effective Doppler in between. The, ha the habit of referring to the formula like this, as if emission and reception were simultaneous events, hides the time interval that separates them. This time interval shows that both events are independent of each other. They occur unilaterally. You don't have to have a detector. You have an objective Doppler effect. That's my point. You need two things. One thing will produce a Doppler. Of course, that's absolute thinking. It is often referred to search for an experiment affected by only one of the two guys, the emitter of an isolated Doppler effect, and through the change of wavelength or frequency, detect the motion of the emitter from within the frame of the emitter. One such unilateral experiment could be light diffraction. Okay, why? There's something very beautiful about light diffraction. Doppler, if you emit and you move together, what you produce here, you cancel here. So you cannot detect it. But diffraction is different. Let, let's keep going. Why? Here's diffraction, a laser. Here's diffraction rating. Uh, it has many rays with n, I mean, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so you have one here, one here, one here. Okay, and negative also. I just, Select the say M1. So this is the angle of diffraction. The sign of the angle of diffraction is the wavelength divided by the width of the slit. As simple as that. It's a beautiful, simple equation. Okay? But so depending on the wavelength, you're going to be here or here or here. Okay? And the position is given by jump. L tangent of the angle. Okay? So that's the problem that I give to my students and they get all this uh, good answer. Okay? It's very simple. Two step equation. Except that you cannot plug this in here because. Sign and tangent are not the same. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the, the book explanation of the diffraction, which is amazing. This is Huygens' principle, any point of space. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about that. This is the pattern that you're familiar with. Let's keep going now to the Brazilian experience. These people are using the information that Earth is going to leave at the fabulous speed of 368 kilometers per second. Okay? Actually, to the left hind leg of the minus 7.22 declination, 11.2 right position. Not my memory, I've done it so many times. So we're going there. Now, they have, suppose that you are not moving. So you have the normal uh, wavelength, okay, here, and you are y sub 2, that's the position where the spot should be. But what happens is that when your instrument is moving, in the opposite direction of the light being thrown, okay, throw light this way, we're moving this way, the lambda is going to stretch, okay? Now, if you stretch, you increase lambda, you're going to increase the angle. So this part, instead of being at y sub c, is going to be at a bigger distance, y plus, I call it. And they detect this motion of this part. 
with the families segmented by 